the submarine Nautilus on the first transpolar voyage from Pacific to Atlantic Oceans. Major operation for the world's first atomic powered ship is the crews under the polar ice cap. We see Nautilus crewmen checking over oxygen equipment and blowers which bring in fresh air. These and the myriad other checks and briefings which mark a monumental step in progress of the submarine for peacetime commerce and for defense, cutting thousands of miles in routes between the two oceans. In four days, the Nautilus travels 1,830 miles across the top of the world, cruising under the Arctic ice cap from the Bering Strait to the Greenland Sea, passing submerged beneath the geographic North Pole. A continuous record of water depth and ice thickness is obtained by the Nautilus safely on its silent and visible cruise below polar ice, which is on an average 12 feet thick, with some ridges extending down 50 feet and even farther. All equipment functions perfectly, including a revolutionary inertial navigation system, which automatically holds the sub on course and depth. The 116 men aboard, when not occupied, see 38 movies during the transpolar trip. The Nautilus carries 75 days of food for the voyage. A birthday celebration marks another temporary halt in the work schedule. Celebration, too, for the happy skipper, Commander William R. Anderson, who later is flown to Washington from his ship to be decorated with the Legion of Merit by President Eisenhower. A presidential unit citation, first ever conferred in peacetime, goes to the submarine with a ribbon and special clasp in the form of a golden N, authorized for all who participated in the unprecedented cruise. Watching proudly and congratulated now by the president is Commander Anderson's wife. The skipper is a submariner in the finest tradition. 37 years old, a wartime product of Annapolis, he saw battle service with distinction and last year assumed command of the Nautilus. And his renowned atomic sub brings new prestige to the nation, new greatness to the U.S. Navy.